this is Jane Lowe and I'm at Super AI here in Singapore Marina Bay Sands and with me today I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Greg Smith who is the Head of Product Marketing with Satinia. Uh, thank you very much uh, to join us in the podcast today. Thank you for having me, great to be here. Yeah, so um, Greg, um, you're going to be sharing with us about these uh, five stages of uh, uh, Prometic AI mm -hmm. journey. But mm -hmm. before we go into that, right, I uh, just want to get your quick take on, you know, data underpins so much of what we do in this digital era and not just AI, right? So how is Gen AI era different in terms of harnessing the data compared to, you know, the earlier sort yeah. of internet era? Yeah, you know, it's interesting with the advent of generative AI, um, we're actually creating data. And that's completely different from where we were previously with other AI technologies like predictive AI, where we're reasoning over information and reasoning over data. But with generative AI, we're actually creating data from other information mm. that's within an organization. And so I think the big thing with that is, you know, what are we actually training the models on? Uh, so as organizations are thinking about how they might be using Gen AI within their firm, they need to be thinking about what is the information that they're using to train those models if it's something specific to that company. Mm, right. So before we get into this uh, maturity model, right, the first thing I think organizations need to do is to have a vision of what, where they want to get to in terms of adopting AI and also get a sense of what kind of data they have, right, in the organization. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we're finding that organizations, of course, have been thinking about their data strategy for years, but they've never really been thinking about it in the context of how it might interface with AI. That's new to organizations. And so the, the data strategy is really the foundational layer mm. that they need to think about. And we'll find, you know, as we chat a little bit more about this maturity model, that's really what underpins the different stages of maturity that organizations go through. It's less about the technology and it's more about the information or the data that they have within their business. So this uh, maturity model takes uh, organizations from, uh, uh, I believe, a silo sort of approach to a more sophisticated, mm. integrated, holistic approach. Exactly. Towards uh, using uh, data, yes. uh, harnessing, uh, extracting value from data. Uh, so tell us more about this uh, maturity model. Yeah, so it, it's really a way to help organizations assess where they are today and what they need to be thinking about to move forward. And we actually are thinking about, you know, how do we take the different aspects of what an organization is doing and make sure that the data connects together. And so it'll start off with the initial stage. And that's really where organizations might have data that's dispersed mm -hmm. And so they're able to leverage AI technologies that are trained on information external to the organization. So think about ChatGPT, mm -hmm. everyone's uh, favorite example of generative AI. You don't need to give it any information mm -hmm. to be able to get some results out of that. That's where it really starts. And it moves up a continuum of using external data to switching into using your own internal information to train models, your own internal intellectual property. And what we're finding is that earlier on, you're able to get a lot of efficiency gains through AI by using different technologies trained by external data. But as you move up the model, you can start influencing business metrics with AI because you're using your own internal information to train those models and use that information to come up with predictions, insights, and actions for an organization. Right, yes. I, I remember that uh, you were talking that the model also takes the organization from, uh, using, from harnessing the data to generate more data to a more predictive exactly. sort of way of uh, getting, extracting value from data. Yeah, that's the whole idea is that the more sophisticated the organization becomes with respect to how they manage their information and how they leverage AI, the, uh, the ability to actually create a closed-looped environment where the predictions are then learning from the outcomes mm. that actually happen in the real world makes it even better. And so that's the whole point is that if we can go ahead and say, uh, let's, you know, for example, perhaps we'll have a prediction around uh, winning an opportunity. And if we do certain things, we might have a higher chance of winning. Well, 
uh, if we do those things and then we win the opportunity, we're getting more information back into the model. So it's this closed loop mm. environment that really brings us towards excellence in terms of how we adopt AI. So it's not just internal and external data, but it's also moving the organization from using static data to a more dynamic use exactly. of data in real time. Exactly. So if I have a, a action that's presented to me and I take that action, um, once I go and express the reality of that action, was it good? Was it actually the correct action to take? And that's what's getting fed back into uh, some of that information to make it more accurate, more predictive for the future. So what kind of organizations should be looking at this uh, maturity model? Yeah, you know, it's really, uh, you know, any organization can benefit from it just in terms of thinking through how to plot out an adoption strategy for AI. Um, you know, we've really structured it for organizations that are project and service based mm. uh, so because they have a whole wealth of information around the different ways they deliver their services to customers. And so that's who we're using it with on a daily basis, uh, but really any organization can benefit from it. So looking at the maturity model, right, uh, where do you think that most organizations are today? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a very broad and open-ended uh, question. Yeah, it is an open-ended <laughs> yeah, question. Really, really. Yeah, well, I, I, I do think that most organizations today are at the very beginning of their journey. Mm. Uh, you know, there's very few companies that uh, if you go into them, they'll say, oh, yes, we are very mature with our adoption of mm. AI and it's driving tremendous value for the business because everybody's trying to figure out how it makes sense for them. And, you know, it's funny when, uh, when we talk to folks, the question we always get asked first about AI is what's everyone else doing. And so we have to think about uh, collecting mm. all the different scenarios we see because, you know, we're a bit of a, uh, we have the ability to centralize that for our customers so we can share best practices among them. So uh, I think the answer to that question is, most organizations have a long way to go, and, and in fact, we're all still learning about how this can impact our businesses. So can you just give us a little bit more breakdown in terms of the different, uh, each stage yes. of the five stages? Yeah, absolutely. So it starts off with our initial state, and uh, the key there is that you know most of the information in the business is fragmented. It's probably in spreadsheets and things like that, and so we're really restricted in how we can use AI. Um, that's where some generative AI capabilities around personal productivity great choice there because that doesn't need anything internal to train it. The next state is repeatable. And that's where we're starting to have use cases for AI that we can actually repeat within the organization. And quite often we'll find companies will have solutions that have good structured data in them that have some AI capabilities baked in. That's where we're able to leverage different AI uh, models at that state. From there we move into controlled and frankly, if an organization can get to this state, they're probably going to be starting to extract really good value out of AI because it's uh, dependent upon them being able to have a single platform type environment with multiple different departments or functions operating to get much more robust and rich data sets to be able to reason over. From there, we really uh, then go into um, what we call optimized. And this state is about having your transactional data and the data that you use to drive your AI in the same place. And the reason that's important is because you continue to add information into that data set as the day goes on and you conduct business with your clients. And so it continues to grow and get more robust. And then the final state is all about continuous improvement. And there isn't a, a large technical change between stage four and stage five. It's really more of a cultural change within an organization. So at that end state, you have really good process controls around data governance. And you have uh, you know, centers of excellence within the business that have deep understanding of AI. And so to really be able to get to that very um, you know, well-adjusted uh, and adopted state of AI, it's no longer about technology. Oh, then. that's interesting because I would. Have, um, so what you're saying is that the first uh, two or three stages is the focus is on the technology transformation, and then the later stages is about the people, the mindset, the exactly. culture. Exactly. Oh, interesting. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And and it's interesting too because uh, in the first states, you know, when we think about well, how is AI going to impact the business? What's the outcome of leveraging it? It's about efficiency. 
doing things faster, uh, you know, doing things uh, at greater scale. When we get into the middle, we start getting into being able to actually move business metrics outside of efficiency. So that's decision intelligence. Mm. That's making better decisions for the business. And then at the end state, it's all about being able to scale that and make sure that it works even better for the organization. So it really is a journey that a company has to go on there. So it's like productivity towards scaling. Exactly. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah. But what about, um, so your um, maturity model talks uh, addresses the availability, accessibility of data. Yes. Uh, and mm -hmm. you also talk about the culture change. Now, specifically within that cultural change, um, what are the sort of uh, dimensions that are relevant? Yeah, you know, it, uh, culture, uh, there's, a, there's a great quote, uh, you know, culture eats strategy for breakfast, right? So the power of cultural change is, is huge. And uh, there's a few different components of that. One of them is, uh, you know, a culture of being able to have, uh, you know, that governance. So really good, clean data, data that's structured. That's less about technology and that's more about the processes that surround the technology in the business. So that's one side of it. And then the other side of it is really uh, about how an organization thinks about resourcing and training its people for AI. And so that's really more about uh, the skill sets that the individuals have within the business because that's where they're going to be able to identify new use cases for AI within the business. Quite often, we focus very much on the technology itself, mm. but it's really when we start focusing on the use cases a little bit more that we start finding really good pockets of value that we can leverage AI to try and extract. There's some argument that even before starting on an AI journey, there's a need to you know, understand the kind of UK use cases that the technology can be applied to. Of course. Rather than wait until I... You yeah, know, you, right. you know, that's, that goes throughout the entire journey. But uh, you know, as you get to that state where you're much more mature, mm. generally you have a much deeper knowledge of AI. And so the possibility of use cases will expand uh, just because of familiarity with the technology and familiarity with what you've already done within the organization. Right, okay. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for the sharing. I have one last question to sure. ask you. Um, I'm not sure whether you will be uh, able to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you think that your organization fits in in this maturity model? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. Uh, you know, um, uh, I, I'll be honest, you know, we're still going on the journey like everybody else. Um, you know, we, uh, we're definitely not at the initial state. We, uh, we're, we're probably a little bit closer to in the middle of the pack. Um, and one of the big things, you know, that we're thinking about is, uh, you know, how do we manage this centrally within the organization? And so that's really uh, starting to get into that culture side of the equation. So I think we've moved past the technology part and we're really starting to think more about internally the cultural aspect of it. So um, that's, that's probably the best I can do in terms of answering that one. Somewhere in the middle. So if I ask you a year later, you will be at the... I'm hoping we're further to the right, for sure. Oh, all right, then. <laughs> I'll catch up with you in a year. Perfect. Perfect. Right. Thank that you, sounds Greg. good. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. Thank you for your time.